All right guys, I searched the whole internet and found the cheapest airsoft guns you could possibly buy. In today's video, we're going to unbox them, run a full chronograph and shooting test on them, and even do a 20 foot drop test on them. We're gonna start with a $5 tiny spring pistol and work with all the way to the grand finale of this $45 full electric M4. Let's get started. All right guys, let's get our video started with this bad boy. This is the Omega .25 auto spring pistol. No idea why they call it a auto spring pistol. This thing is obviously just spring and it's obviously just semi-automatic. It looks like we have a little instruction we actually have to use this guy pretty simple insert the bb's in the magazine load it up cock it back and ready to shoot that's pretty much what these say up there so yeah we get a little bag for this guy obviously with this price point we're not getting any crazy nice boxes so let's see how this guy feels and what we get in the actual bag. This is like the least amount of BBs I've ever seen in the bag. Pretty funny. All right, so this is what we're working with. Uh, first impressions, very plasticky. Obviously, it's super lightweight. This guy definitely feels as cheap as you can get. Nothing insanely like, you know, like kind of creaking or rattling or like, you know, gonna fall off or anything like that. So at least it's like somewhat able to stay together at this price point, which is a uh, definitely a good sign. The only pretty much button that works with this guy is the trigger, obviously, and then the mag release. So there's the little mag release. There's the tiny little magazine. I would guess this guy holds maybe like five or 10 at the very most. And may I add, this guy is actually not the easiest to uh, cock back. So maybe we'll get some good FPS from this guy. And the actual trigger feels pretty solid. Obviously it's not the easiest trigger to pull back for this price point. So that's a good sign and very like snappy loud pop when you shoot this guy. So without further ado, let's go ahead and shoot this guy and see how it does. All right, so all of the chronographs will be done today with 0.20 BBs. Let's see what this guy's shooting up first. All right, first shot, not too bad. 164.7 FPS with 0.25 joules. 165 FPS with 0.25 joules again. Last shot, damn, this guy's actually not, not too bad, very consistent. This one is shooting 163.6 FPS for the third shot with 0.25 joules. So the joules remain the same the whole time. So very consistent with this guy and the FPS is basically like one or take like one or two. So not too bad with this guy. But now let's go ahead and turn on that target and see if this guy would do good at a 50 foot shooting test. First off, I'm just gonna aim directly at the center of the target and just like basically not aim up at all and see what this guy will even hit. Ooh, okay, so seems to be pretty relatively accurate, but we're gonna need to aim up a little bit with this guy. Oof, just tap the left side of the target right there. Yikes. Ooh, that was a good one. Oof, off to the left right there. Not bad. All right, so here are our results. Not the worst thing in the world. Obviously, we got quite a few that kind of missed. We probably had to do like 15 shots to hit all 10 on the target or something like that. But we got a group of three up here as well as one right there, one over there. And actually, we got one on the red right there. So not too bad for that guy. So overall, this guy will hit something about 40, 50 feet away. That's, you know, basically the size of a human frame. But is it accurate? I uh, probably wouldn't say that. All right, guys, in today's video, we're doing the cheapest airsoft guns, as you guys know. But because of this, we're going to be introducing a new segment in today's video. We're going to be doing a drop test. So I'm here on the second stream. Story. I'm gonna be dropping this guy from about 20 feet. I'm gonna be doing this with all the airsoft guns in the video just to see how they will hold up with a 20 foot drop. All right, let's get straight into this guy. Yeet. <laughs> Ooh, that one didn't survive. <laughs> Oh man, okay. I actually thought this guy would survive the fall just because of how like compact this guy was, but uh, as you can see, definitely not the best results. The two side grips totally just like fell off. And that's not a huge deal or anything like that. Let's see if this guy will actually like still shoot a BB. Hey, okay, this one still works. Big success. Hey guys, real quick, I wanna pause the video and talk about today's sponsor, Arena Breakout. Arena Breakout invited me to try the knife in challenge. In the challenge rules, our players can only bring a knife when entering in the game, but you're allowed to use the guns that you find or loot in the game. So after playing some games, it was definitely more challenging than I thought. It's crazy, every time you die, you actually have to lose all your in-game loot, so you have to play with some caution. The concept of this game reminds me of Tarkov. Arena Breakout is an amazing tile for this game because you literally go into the arena and you break out. Once you drop into the arena, you have to search the map and eliminate bad guys and steal their loot. You can also find cool items around the map as well. Oh my god! Wow! Arena Breakout does a great job making their guns look realistic. I've even unboxed some of the guns they have in the game on my channel recently, which is super cool to then play with them in the game. At first, this was definitely a challenge trying to sneak around and get bad guys with just a knife. But I also met a friend to help me during my mission, and this definitely came in handy. He even got some bad guys for me. But I definitely got into some sticky situations by myself, but I seemed to manage okay. My toughest battle yet was there was a group of two heavily armed bad guys, and well, they definitely weren't messing around, so my knife wasn't going to cut it. So I had to take out the big guns, but I managed to get them and their loot. They were heavily armed, but in the end, victory was mine, so I decided to celebrate with some cornflakes. 
Apparently my arena buddy was rich because he left me this insane M16 worth $10,000. So you bet I took that to sell it later. Or if you want, you could keep something cool that you find while looting and use it next time. All right, so next up we have a another $5 airsoft gun. It actually has pictures of a like some kind of like high kappa looking uh, airsoft gun, like, you know, pistol. Obviously it's pretty funny. This is a airsoft shotgun and this guy has like labeling for a pistol. And obviously it says on the front airsoft pistol. So that's already off to a pretty funny start with an airsoft shotgun in a bag. Another funny thing is this guy is like basically broken through the bag in the shipping process. Obviously super cheap bag with this guy. All right, but let's go ahead and slide this bad boy out of the bag and check it out. Um, pretty much just like a full block block of plastic obviously nothing metal in sight with this guy it does do a little bit of wobbling as like the first one but overall kind of feels pretty solid it's not gonna like you know break i don't think if you drop it and uh, yeah the everything kind of seems to be uh somewhat intact so yeah not the worst thing for five dollars all right then how do we actually shoot this bad boy well come to the back and there is a little slide you slide that open you put the bbs in that little hole right there and you put that closed like so and then you basically just cock this guy back and you're ready to go and yeah, when you shoot it, I guess the body starts to separate. That is definitely not good. All right, we got our BBs loaded up in there. As you can see, let's go ahead and pop this guy back and see what it's got. All right, 116.3 FPS for the first shot with 0.13 joules. Second shot is 131.9 FPS with 0.16 joules. Last shot, 130 FPS with 0.16 joules. So uh, not the worst, but definitely a little bit less than our first pistol. Let's go ahead and see how this guy does with our 50 foot shooting test. All right, let's see what this guy's got. Gonna aim the iron sights directly at the middle of the target and see where it goes. Okay, I didn't even shoot. Ooh! All right, that actually went like super over the top of the target. Very interesting. Oh, that was a, not a bad one. Oof, okay, way over the target again. Whoa, okay, these are shooting crazy weird. <laughs> that went straight to like the right side target. That one went just straight down. Okay, this guy's definitely not that good. Not too bad with that one. That shot like three of them that time. Okay, I went to the crazy up left uh, to the target. And sometimes it doesn't even shoot. That was a good one. Didn't shoot. Didn't shoot. Shot crazy to the upper right. <laughs> Maybe I just need to put some more BBs in this guy. All right, this thing is extremely inconsistent. As you guys can see, it's, it's like shooting left, right, way over the target, down straight to the target. This thing is terrible, but at least like every like one in three, one in four, one in five shots, it does have a kind of a miracle shot and actually shoots where the iron sights are pointed. As you can see, it hit a couple of those on the target right there in the blue and the black. So uh, not too bad, but the other like 50 to 90% of the shots of this guy are absolutely terrible. This guy is definitely like a uh, brick of plastics. So my hopes for this guy surviving are pretty high. I don't think there's any pieces that are gonna go flying off like that pistol. So let's test it out. Ooh, that one looked bad. All right, so not as good as I thought. This grip is uh, completely about to fall off. As you can see on this side, it's holding on by a little plastic piece, basically holding on by a thread. So not good. That guy's definitely broken. And surprisingly, the actual like pump action kind of is about to fall off too. But will it shoot? We'll see if it'll actually shoot still. Hey, well, it shot like five BBs at once. We'll see if it'll actually shoot properly. Hey, okay, so it works. All right, time to get a little bit more fancy up in this place. Uh, this one is a whole $2 more than the last one. This one comes in at $7. And as you can see, we're not living in the slums anymore. We got a cardboard box of this guy. No more plastic bags. So that is a big upgrade for this guy as well. And this guy is known as a UK Arms P2336. And this guy is kind of mimicking, obviously, like an M16 style rifle. This says one-to-one -one scale high-performance plastic airsoft guns. So uh, pretty funny. This is obviously not one-to-one -one scale. I'm definitely curious to see what this guy looks like. Let's go ahead and slide this guy over open and see what we got what oh all right so basically everything just slides out like that i thought it was gonna be like basically a little tiny guy but it looks like it is a little bit bigger than i thought so that's kind of good but yeah this guy is basically just like a little m16 so that's how you pretty much uh make it look right there obviously you could probably actually use this guy without even putting on the uh you know like little rail on the front but uh obviously it's not really what it's supposed to look like but i think it looks kind of funny just like that there is the tiny little magazine right there i think you put the bbs down there in that little tiny hole right there and then you basically just like you know shake them up into this other section right there there where it is spring loaded one thing to note is this uh when you pull back the actual like uh you know fake a bolt little thingy right there uh, it's definitely not the most high quality so i'm kind of afraid of this thing like snapping or something like that so i'd definitely be worried about that just it does not feel very secure when you're uh, pulling this guy back 
I definitely would think that is going to be one of the main failure points of this guy. But other than that, you pretty much just like uh, plug this guy in and I think you're just ready to go. So, all right, we got my favorite one in the video so far up next. This one is just pretty funny. just like so small, little tiny mini M16. I'm very curious to see how this guy will shoot. Let's see how it does. <laughs> Okay, so 66.8 FPS was 0 0.04 joules. Oh no, I accidentally shot the chronograph. Oops. At least it's only shooting 60 FPS, so it doesn't even matter. All right, second shot, 63.8 FPS was 0 0.4 joules. All right, last shot. Looks like we got 58.9 FPS with 0 0.03 joules. Let's go ahead and do that 50 foot shooting test. Oop. Oof, okay, yeah, this guy is definitely not gonna have the range to hit the target. So let's scoot up about 20 feet and give this guy another shot. Oof, still not the still not the optimal range for this guy. All right, here we go. This is more like it. <laughs> it's still hitting the bottom of the target. Oh no. All right, almost in melee distance. This is what these guys' optimal range is. Let's test it out. Oh no, it's still aiming down. That's crazy. Gotta reload quick. Switching max. Everything is just so funny about this guy. It's so small. What? It like shot its own self in like the barrel. It's crazy. Definitely not good. Oof, that like went straight down to the left. It didn't even hit like aiming directly at the target from this range. That's embarrassing. All right, that hit that time. That time shot two. There we go. <laughs> what? All right, so this guy is definitely by far the worst one of today. Basically, not even consistently shooting on the target at basically like 10 feet away. So yeah, we got a weird little grouping down here. I don't even have to say this, but obviously you cannot use this guy in the field, but this guy probably can't even be used as a backyard toy either. It's not even accurate at like 10 feet, so it wouldn't even be fun. So this guy probably is more gonna be used as like a desk ornament. That's probably all this guy is good for. All right, that little guy that could, we'll see if it survives our drop test. Definitely not. I mean, obviously it came in the box like this sort of, but yeah, this definitely not supposed to do that. Ooh, yeah, the body itself just absolutely snapped. That's crazy. And the stock also snapped off as well. Not ideal. Obviously there's no repairing this guy, but will it still shoot? Uh, probably not. <laughs> Okay, well obviously it's not like able to feed up in the actual area where it shoots out, but if you want to just like pull this back and, uh, you know, release it, you could still shoot a BB. So there you go. That guy definitely did not survive. Welcome to the Airsoft Gun Graveyard. All right, next up, again, going up a significant amount of money. This one is coming in at $9.99. And this guy is the Double Eagle M30 TMP Spring Submachine Gun. This guy, again, comes in a little nice box. So there we go. It looks like we even have a hop-up, which is pretty cool for this price point as well. First time we actually have to use our knife in this video to cut this little tape. Looks like we have a little owner's manual, maybe a warnings over there. Comes in a nice little bag. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Whoa, blue BBs. Damn, I've actually never never seen an gun come with blue BBs, I don't think, so that's kind of cool. All right, so this is what we're working with. Definitely an interesting guy. So uh, you can notice right here the writing at the top, definitely some interesting things going on. It says Star Double Eagle Model Air Gun. So one thing to note, this is a uh, airsoft gun, not an air gun. And it says model and it has a A and 7E. I'm even dyslexic and I even know how to spell that. So it's not a good sign for this guy. It's got some fancy text for the model number M30, but pretty funny, it actually has a made in China with some super fancy text right here. I've never seen that. But this guy's obviously the hardest to pull back by a mile in this video so far. So this guy might actually have the heaviest and most powerful spring, hopefully, in this video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check out the FPS and see how far this guy shoots. Woo. All right, first shot, 162.7 FPS with 0.25 joules. Very similar numbers in that first pistol. All right, second shot. That is the most powerful shot for today's video so far. 188.6 FPS with 0.33 joules. Last shot. All right, another record breaker. <laughs> the most powerful shot for today and the third shot for this guy is 190.2 FPS with 0.34 joules. All right, with that nice increase on FPS in the previous airsoft gun, let's go ahead and see if this guy will actually outshoot it as well. Definitely got the most faith in this one so far because of the FPS. Let's go ahead and see how this guy shoots. Ooh, okay. Definitely by far the best one in the video so far. Wow, okay, not too bad. Oh, that was a little low. All right, that was to the right, but shooting pretty straight. Nice. Nice. Ooh, I was on the target that time. 
Nice, another one on the target. A little to the lower section right there. All right, so it looks like we have a little straggler up here and then another one down there. But for the most part, we got a nice little grouping down here below the target as well as two actually on the target. So this guy was shooting absolutely amazing, but will it survive the drop test? Well, we'll have to find out right now. Whoa, it actually survived. All right, so I think this guy is absolutely scot-free. It actually landed on the magazine upright like that. So uh, that might have actually helped it survive. And I think it still will shoot, so we'll check it out. Uh-oh, that's not good. Um, uh-oh, maybe it didn't survive. Oh no, so something kind of happened with the uh, slide obviously on this guy. It's uh, not wanting to shoot whatsoever. You can't even cock back the spring. Somehow the spring got like, uh, you know, unattached in there or something like that. But yeah, it's definitely not gonna be able to shoot. Dang, I was actually uh, hoping this guy would actually survive. That would mean it would actually survive the drop test and it'd be like the best shooting so far. But as you can see, yeah, nothing. Dang, I really wanted this guy to work. Oh. All right, next up, definitely jumping up a crazy amount of price categories. This guy is a whole 12 cents more than the previous one. This guy comes in at $10 and 11 cents. And this guy is the UK Arms M7575. And this guy is basically just mimicking a silver M9. All right, let's check this guy out. Definitely looks pretty spicy. Again, we have that plastic wrap like the previous one as well. All right, so this guy is definitely a little uh, combo of black and silver. Pretty cool design, not too bad for this guy. Obviously, this guy's only $10, but you know, from a far distance, this guy actually probably looks pretty nice. And then uh, weirdly on the side, it says UK Arms M757, and on the actual box, it says M7575, so I'm not sure why they left off that extra five, but uh, yeah, just maybe making it a little bit shorter and cleaner on the actual airsoft gun. But obviously with this price point, they have a whole bunch of crazy decisions with these guys, so I can't say I didn't expect that missing five on there. Let's take out the magazine and check that out. Looks like they did not end up actually Painting the full magazine silver, just the little bottom part. Woo! Definitely not an easy slide to pull back. I just know something kind of weird. So on the outer barrel, it has these like crazy like scratch or like burn marks weirdly on the like orange outer barrel right there. So uh definitely very interesting. All right, guys, this guy is a whole 12 cents more than that previous one. So is it worth it? Well, let's go find out. Let's go do the chronograph and shooting test. All right, a fun fact, I just noticed this. Actually, this button right here, if you press that in, is actually a safety. So I didn't even notice that when I was unboxing it. So as you can see, it is a total safety. That's pretty cool. But weirdly enough, on this side, to actually deactivate the safety, it's like this little stem. It's pretty funny. So that is off safe right there. Woo. All right, 113.5 FPS with 0.12 joules. All right, second shot, we got 115.6 FPS with 0.12 joules. Last shot. 114.6 FPS with 0.12 joules. I actually have high hopes for this guy in the shooting test. It kind of seems to be pretty consistent. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do the 50 foot shooting test and see how this guy's working out. Definitely gonna be hard to beat that TMP, but let's see how the Silver M9 does. Okay, not too inaccurate. All right, we're definitely gonna skew up a little bit with this guy. All right, let's go to about 30 feet here. All right, that's more like it. Definitely gonna aim up still a little bit at this range, which is not the best, but uh, at least it's shooting somewhat accurately. All right, so here are results. Most of these shots actually went right there, so not bad, super nice grouping right there. It looks like we even got one in the red right there. So far, not the worst accuracy in the video so far, but definitely the range is not that good. Let's see if it survives the drop test. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Bro, this thing literally evaporated. Holy, what is this? Maybe it's like a fake weight or something like that. Maybe that explains a lot of these like cheap airsoft guns. They have like these fake weights in them. So basically what's left of this guy it might still work like that first pistol. So I'll go ahead and give it a try. The body itself is cracked as well. So that's not good. It might still shoot though if I can get the slide on. We'll see if it'll work. Uh-oh. I'm not sure if we can recover this guy. Ah, uh, maybe. Yeah, something's definitely off about this guy. There's a possibility this guy probably could be repaired, but uh, it's not working out too well. So we'll count that as a fail. All right, so next up we have the UK Arms P2300, and this is basically mimicking a AUG. And this guy comes in at a staggering $12. All right, so here it is. Not the worst thing I've ever seen. Looks like we do get that little scope in the laser include, so I'll actually have to test this guy out and see how it works. Looks like first up, I could take out this little, <laughs> what the heck? They literally include like 
10 BBs. That's hilarious. They definitely were cheaping out with this guy. Like, why even include BBs if you're gonna include 10? That's pretty funny. All right, so first up, let's check if this laser works. So this is one of these ones where you have to pull the little tab, then it activates it. Obviously, there's batteries already in there. You can see those little silver. And now it works, so uh, let's go ahead and turn it on and see if it actually is uh, bright. Um, well, you can't see the laser whatsoever uh, on camera. But if you look at it, you could definitely see that there is a laser on. But yeah, that thing is uh, so dim, you can't even see it. So yeah, basically useless laser. But at least hopefully it looks cool in the airsoft gun. All right, next up, let's see what kind of crazy uh, variable scope we got with this bad boy. Um, All right, looks like it just hollow. That's great. <laughs> so it's kind of weird. They actually sort of tried on this side with the scope to make some sort of crosshair. So there is a uh, cool little crosshair with a little circle right there. So, it, you know, it kind of works. Not the worst thing in the world. But to line it up, there is literally like plastic in the middle that you basically obstructing the whole view of this guy. So pretty much renders this guy useless. Definitely not the best design. Uh, on the uh, side right there, it says M31A. That's obviously not the same, uh, you know, code they use on the box. So not sure why it says that on there. Definitely all these airsoft guns at this price are all out of whack with what their names are and like what codes they use and all this crazy stuff. But um, yeah, definitely pretty interesting. If you come to the front right here, the first thing funny to point out is it's like basically mimicking like rail covers with this guy. So obviously instead of having like a quad rail, you can actually put stuff on. It's kind of funny on the bottom, they actually like put a rail over the rail cover on the bottom to actually put the little uh, rail segment right there. All right, well, you can't take out the magazine and load it up. Well, so how do you actually get this guy to load up? Well, to get the BBs actually in here, it's pretty funny. The actual rail system right here, you actually put the uh, scope. You actually have to take the end of the rail piece and literally pull it off. And then there's a little hole to put the BBs in. So it's uh, definitely a pretty interesting design. The action system is actually this little grip right here. So as you can see it moving back, you pull this guy all the way back and then you load a BB in and you pull the trigger and you're ready to go. Definitely not correct for an AG, but this is like falling off. That's not good. You definitely didn't see that. Anyway, let's go ahead and corner grab this guy and shoot it and see how it does. Another kind of weird thing about this guy is actually when you put on the scope, you can't even like load up with more BBs, obviously, because if you slide it back, the hole is still under the scope. So you're actually gonna have to slide the scope all the way off to actually access where you put the BBs in right there. All right, first shot, 147.3 FPS with 0.2 joules. Next shot, very consistent. Wow, only went down like point something FPS. So this one is 147.1 FPS with 0.2 joules again. Again, the joules are 0.2 and the FPS at time is 147 FPS. Definitely looking very good for this guy. Let's go to the shooting test and see how it does. Ooh, okay. Definitely gonna need a skill with this guy as well. Oof, okay. To the lower left of the target. Whoa, that one just like went directly over there. <laughs> okay, this guy is definitely terrible. That one like lobbed to the upper right over like way by that tree. So uh, definitely not the best guy so far in the video. Got to be one of the top worst ones so far. That time didn't even shoot. Oh, come on. Does it stop working? That time shot like four at once. Oof. Okay, that guy is so bad. Come on, at least hit it once. No, it was so, it literally shot right here. I saw it hit right there. How's that even possible? Yes. <laughs> there we go. No, it shot the tree. Dude, some of these misses are crazy. Oh, that was a good one. So obviously we screwed up to about 20 feet with this guy and here's are the results. We got a nice little one on the yellow right there, a couple more on the target as well. But besides that, we got a couple, you know, down to the lower left and kind of like sporadically around the other side of the target. Insane inconsistencies with this guy and definitely not the most accurate thing either. So uh, obviously not the worst one in the video so far, but uh, definitely not the best. Oh, that's not good. Well, first of all, we have the laser over there. We got the uh, part of the stock over there, the scope right there. Oh, this guy's not looking good. It's, whoa, okay, that's crazy. It's like some fake weights, I guess, for the stock. So weirdly enough, a lot of these airsoft guns kind of like these like fake weights in them, just making them feel a little bit like more high quality, but obviously they are fake. So in there is just like nothing, but they obviously put these fake weights in there to kind of make it feel a little bit more realistic. But yeah, obviously, uh, oh, this guy probably is not gonna shoot. This uh, whole front piece of one is wanting to uh, break off. So not ideal. But there's only one way to find out this guy was shoot. Let's test it out. Bruh. And that answers our question. 
This guy is a fully electric airsoft gun, the first one of the video. This guy is coming in at a staggering price of $24. And this guy is the Well D93 and kind of mimicking a like a Mac 11 or something like that. And if you are curious, there's the little mechanism inside. So pretty cool though. The motor is actually sitting at the back of the airsoft gun. All right, so this is what we got. This is looking uh, way fatter and kind of chunkier than I thought it was gonna look like. So let's go ahead and see what this guy actually uh, feels like. They actually didn't uh, wimp out on some BBs. So you actually got some uh, good amount of BBs in this bag. They actually filled it up. So uh, definitely didn't cheap you out on that. So pretty nice. And then here is the little charger right there. This guy just has a little red kind of little light come on when you're charging. It. And then obviously when it's done, it has a little green light. So there you go, pretty simple. The next up, let's actually check out the magazine with this bad boy. Oh, it's actually okay. Not even a magazine at all. This is actually the battery itself, but it's actually in the uh, little plastic casing that looks like a magazine. All right, but there it is and all of its glory. Pretty cool. Obviously nothing insanely heavy because I'm pretty sure everything in there is still plastic anyway, like the, uh, you know, gears and stuff like that. But it does add some weight to the top end of this guy. So uh, it makes it a little bit kind of nicer and heavier, but uh, obviously it's still super lightweight for this guy. And then basically you just load up the BBs in there and they kind of funnel into that little hole down there and you basically have this guy loaded up. But yeah, overall pretty simple design with this guy. Obviously when you get the battery fully charged up, you basically just plug it into this guy right here. Now once this guy is all plugged up, you pretty much just like run the wires in here and kind of try to like tuck them up as best as possible. Then you pretty much just like plug up this like fake uh, magazine battery looking thing and uh, there you go. So the safety actually works pretty cool. And then there is the little fire mode. So you can actually pull it once for semi-automatic. And then obviously you want to do fire, you hold it down. I'm super curious to see what the fire rate of this guy obviously sounds super slow. All right, we got our battery all loaded up and the BBs all the way in there. Let's see what this guy's got. The first one for that group of two was 118.6 FPS with 0.13 joules. Next shot is 116.1 FPS with 0.13 joules. And then the last shot is 119 FPS with 0.13 joules again. So relatively consistent. Now let's see what the RPS is. All right, looks like we got about 5.1 rounds per second. All right, let's see what this guy does. First, we can just aim straight onto the target with the iron sights and see where it goes. It's just hitting the lower part of the target, so we're gonna scoot up just a little bit with this guy. Let's scoot up about like 10 feet or something like that. That's probably good enough. This guy's pretty much only full auto, so we'll try our best just to do little bursts. Okay, now it's not feeding. There we go. Definitely great results for about 35, 40 feet away. We got a huge little grouping right here on the target, as well as a little grouping of four down there to the lower right. All right, now let's just light this guy up. <laughs> okay, so the feeding consistency is definitely pretty bad with this guy, but it's definitely pretty fun to shoot. And for about 30 feet away, definitely pretty good results. All right, let's do one more full auto burst just because we can. It's so inconsistent, it's so funny. For every like 10 shots, this guy shoots like three BBs, it's hilarious. All right, now these guys are getting a little bit more expensive, so this is gonna hurt just a little bit more dropping this guy, but I uh, hope this guy actually survives so I can give it away to club members, but if not, yeah, I won't be able to do that. So without further ado, let's uh, test this guy out. Ah, uh, maybe survived. Oof, all right, so it looks a little bit worse down here than it does up there. The battery system uh, obviously could probably still be put in and probably have not be an issue, hopefully. Looks like the top of this guy is wanting to actually come off. Uh, maybe it won't, maybe that's just like a little piece that's trying to fall off. So maybe we're good to go. Let's go ahead and put the battery back in and see if this guy will still shoot. And you could see the uh, bottom of the magazine got a huge chip off too, but it uh, looks like this guy might work. Oh boy, the fire like won't even move. Let's see if we can put it back to safety. Ooh, maybe not. So uh, I think the fire select is stuck in fire mode, but at least that's probably better than safe. Hey! Hey, shot one. Hey! All right, guys, we're sure getting crazy with this last one, working up to the big ball airsoft guns yet again. This guy comes in at $45.49. Let's check out our grand finale for today's video. All right, well, first off, let's start with the boring stuff. Looks like we have a little charger right here. Pretty much the same as the last one. It looks like, oh, weird, the kind of a plug for this guy. I'm not sure what kind of battery comes with this thing. Then uh, that's pretty interesting. Maybe it plugs into the airsoft gun itself to charge. I have no idea. I've never seen anything like that. So uh, we'll check that out in a sec, actually, how to charge this guy up. Ooh. All right, it looks like it comes with a little fake uh, scope right here. So pretty cool. Okay, so this guy looks like it works as the actual magazine too. So uh, not only is it a fake red dot side, it actually is a not even a scope in general. It's like a fake weird magazine, but at least it's a cool way to store your BBs though. So you basically just latch this guy open, put the BBs in there. And then once you get this guy all plugged up to the top of the airsoft gun, it looks like they uh, drop into that hole to somewhere in the body itself. So I'll go ahead and check that out in a sec, but uh, very interesting. Looks like we got the full stock right here and it looks like we can adjust it. So that's very nice. All right, here is the little magazine. So this guy obviously you could see is mimicking the same style as the last one with 
with the actual battery in the actual magazine itself. Obviously not sure why they don't just make this into a normal resolve magazine and do it like normal, but maybe they're just trying to save cost. Maybe this is like a cost effective way of how to get this guy to be electric. So uh, pretty interesting. Looks like we have like two little like connection things. So somehow this plugs up to the airsoft gun and you know connects to it. And then obviously this is where you take the little wall charger boy and plug that up. Pretty funny. This is going to look definitely very interesting charging in my room like this. I've never had a battery that looked like an airsoft magazine before. Looks like we already have some like corrosion growing on the uh, little wall charger. So that's not good. Definitely some weird stuff going on here. Looks like we also have a full bag of yellow BBs to this guy and a little sling as well. And then coming down here to the other side of the box, we have a little grip as well. And then to actually get this guy plugged up, you just rotate this down and that will move this guy downward. You basically put it onto the rail system where you want. And then you rotate this guy up until it actually locks on the airsoft gun's rail. All right, enough boring stuff. Let's go ahead and take this guy out and see what it looks like. Actually like pretty full size to be honest. Instead of having the actual like logo or like the actual like, you know, name of this airsoft gun, it just has like a crazy like square engraved in this guy. So uh, very interesting. Now, there's a little weird hole where you drop the, uh, you know, BBs into. And it's kind of nice too, because there's a little arrow actually on these scopes. You can actually line up both the arrows and you'll know where to actually put this guy. So that's what it'll look like when you have actually that guy on top of there. And then you just put the BBs in this little uh, slider up there and they'll just like kind of somehow feed up or shake around and feed up into this little hole eventually and then feed up into the airsoft gun. So there you go. This is definitely not the uh, smoothest way to do it, but uh, there you go. Put the grip on right there. All right, got that bad boy on there. And then last but not least, put in the little fake battery magazine and that's what it looks like. Pretty much a full scale M4. This guy is a little wobbly and creaky. Nothing insane though, but uh, definitely not the most high quality thing. It's kind of what you'd expect for a $45 airsoft gun and now pretty funny enough for the actual like a uh, safety semi and auto settings you actually have the safety which actually seems to be working which is nice but then when you go up to the uh, normal semi-automatic setting you have like a little auto sign so i'm not sure if it's this all full auto or if you actually have semi-automatic and they just like mislabeled it i'm not too sure so i'll have to actually test it out all right we got our finale for today's video we got the electric battery all charged up let's check it out so for the fire select obviously it says auto where the semi should be so let's see if this guy will shoot semi-automatic real quick Nope, it is only full autos, but we'll try our best to shoot some of the mag by just pulling the trigger a little bit. All right, so first shot, 122 FPS with 0.14 joules. Next shot, 128.7 FPS with 0.15 joules. And then the last shot is 123.9 FPS with 0.14 joules. All right, we got the premium boy, the grand finale of today's video. Let's see what this guy's got. That one shot like BBs against each other and like one went crazy to the left and one just went straight up. And like the uh, previous submachine gun, this guy definitely does not like to be shot on semi mag. It wants to be held down. So I'm trying my best to actually do some kind of an accurate test here, but we'll do a photo test soon. Don't worry. Range definitely was not the strong suit of this guy. Obviously we could see the huge grouping down here. So let's actually go ahead and scoot a little bit closer to the target and now do a full auto burst. Got a little bit of a nicer grouping right here and even got a whole bunch on the target. Let's do one more quick test while we're at it. All right, that's actually not too bad of a grouping right there. Obviously kind of to the lower right hand side of the target, but definitely not the worst grouping I've ever seen. Let's go ahead and see if this guy will survive. Oh, oh that's not looking good. Oh. So, uh, I've seen worse. It might have survived. Let's go ahead and pick this. Oh, that's not looking good. Oh boy. So uh, the grip completely snapped off here. Um, the rail is obviously doing some 360s. Definitely should not be doing that. I think it might be fine. Obviously that scope went flying off too. And it looks like we have a little crack in the slide, but the body looks okay. The magazine battery boy thing looks fine. Oof, and here is our scope system right here. But as far as this guy actually working, uh, let's test it out. It still actually fires, so it does work, but uh, yeah, not the best condition. Thanks so much for watching the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Comment if you're going to try the knife in challenge too. Here's what loot I got from my knife only run. Come and beat my record in arena breakout with the knife in challenge.